So we bought an electric vehicle. It's a Ford Transit van, originally converted by Oz DIY Electric Vehicles in Springwood in early 2020. It's rusty. The traction battery is completely shagged from what I can see, and we paid 3,000 bucks for it. Let's take a look. Living and working in Queensland's Gold Coast, right on the beach, it certainly hasn't done this motor any favours. We've got corrosion on all components, even all the brake lines. Anything that wasn't converted is still all corroded. We've got rust forming on the nuts and bolts from the install. We've got corrosion forming on the cooling plate. Looks like we've got garden fittings for the radiator. Little inline pump there to actually cool the, was it S, SME? Smart AC, smart motion controller. We've got a Renergy DC to DC. So that one takes the high voltage from the battery and converts it into low voltage for the other electronics in the car that need 12 volts and the 12 volt batteries. We've got lots of little weird things. Now, I don't know how much of this was done when the car was built and how much has been added onto, but tape falling off. We've got a fuse that is just literally electrical tape and a bit of heat shrink underneath there. Hyper 9 underneath there. Got your terminals. So we've got a fan at the front. And for what we can work out at the moment, the traction battery is completely flat. The two batteries inside the car have been replaced already. My older brother went ahead and did that. You've got the batteries underneath there. And you've got a charger on it. Unfortunately, it's not doing much. I mean, those two new batteries are charging. They're the, the car batteries. We've got a caravan to home adapter down here to try and charge the vehicle. Uh, it's a 15 amp plug, but unfortunately it's only drawing about in between eight and 30 watts. but no current draw, so it's not actually charging. You can see a little red light in there saying it's got power. In the back, there's not much to see. The batteries themselves were mounted from the underside and up, and we'll jump underneath the car and have a look at it soon. But she's in a right hole state, as you can see. We've got two battery packs at the back, got little glands, and has actually got a Batrium BMS. So those little data lines there for the Batrium BMS. And the two larger ones are for the negative and the positive. I believe it's around about 120 volt battery. So we've got a big battery there on the other side. Another one on this side. It makes it very hard to show you. And then at the back, we have another two. Those batteries are held to the frame underneath the car by a couple of bolts. Four on either side and a nice sturdy galvanized steel box. We've got the AC charger there, so we've got 144 volts. I haven't seen any branding or marking on this yet. I probably will see it in this video. We've got a couple of plugs dangling around. Conduit is failing underneath here. It actually just looks like internal house conduit rather than out, out external grade conduit, which is a little bit troubling. So we'll have to change, transfer all that. And that's got the 240 volt cable in it. But it is shielded again, so we've got 240 volt there. Um, actually, I just moved that, and then that light turned on and off. That's not very good. I'm moving that. That's flicking and carrying on. So it's got a bad connection in that joint somewhere. That's 240 volt, so I probably should be careful with that. But it is shielded in there. And it's got that covering it. You can sort of see the, the shielded wire in there. So it's not too bad. And I'm not an electrician and I am not an EV builder. So I am just looking at what I can see. Uh, more witness marks there from the grinder. And then we've got the cables there. We've got the bedroom cables going into that one. So they all loop around. They're not terribly twisted. I would have liked to see them twisted. I think they're supposed to be twisted. Uh, they are not twisted. They're not twisted through the whole loom by the look of that. But what I'd like from you guys is to tell me what I wanted, what I should do with this car. Uh, it's not actually mine. It's my brother's, my older brother's. We've got the gearbox up there. Uh, I'd like to find out some history on it if I could. Uh, if anybody knows the history of this vehicle. That's the electric I'll put, transit I'll put van. In throughout this video. The three boys are going to go for driving it. Or Oz DIY electric vehicles. 
when they did the conversion, uh, some of the parts they appear to have used, and see if I can make any assumptions from what is still in use in this vehicle. Going into the passenger side, we can see a lot more damage here. That's actually been belted up. We've got some damage and some rust up there. Lots of rust on the outside of the vehicle up there. And then in the front, green light charging okay, orange light balance or float charge, red fully charged. Maybe that is on the charger underneath the car. Any other combination of lights equals fault code, no charging. Note, code and call us. We've got driving the van. Just a whole heap of uh, very useful information if you've got the car. And this is all in it when we bought it. When we bought it, when my brother bought it. So I'll leave a link to all this sort of stuff. I'll get it scanned in. And then we've got owner's manual. I'm not sure what that's for. GPS antenna. So that might be the speedo or something like that. And the EV Ford Transit. When starting the Ford Transit, ensure, ensure forward reverse switch is in the middle position. Etc. etc. So a little bit of reading stuff. The dash looks pretty much stock. That gear knob looks like it's um, seen better days. any further information or you know anything about this car or the components on the car let me know there's a couple of people in Brisbane that have already seen uh, a few photos from this in a live feed uh, and they've already reached out to me with some information I'd love to know what the conversion cost of this vehicle was and if I happen to find that out before I release the video I'll use it as clickbait in the title after finding just 16 volts on the battery, on the traction battery, this is one of them. It's about 200 millimetres deep, which is more than enough space to get it out from underneath the car. So we've got a motorbike lift or an ATV lift. I'm going to pull it out. About 18 cells in this box. Um, they are seeming to be floating around. They're not secured in any way. There's no mechanical way for them to stop bashing against the walls and stuff there is that bus bar that goes all the way across the back Let's take a look at some voltages five volts that is terrifying so we've got 0.8 0.8 0.8 that one's 0.2 so that's quite low 0.8 and 0.8 of a volt. So that one's 0.2, so that one's dangerously low. Uh, I haven't had much to do with lithium ion phosphate batteries. I'm not sure what it's gonna take and if we can save these batteries from the scrap heap. And it's about a week later and we're back on the EV project again. Now, a lot has been done in the past week. Uh, as you saw from the last clip, uh, we had 0.9 volts on average on those cells at the back of the car. So we got a front bumper. It's been refurbished by our brother using boot polish of all things. He's over there. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, EV Mini number plates. Mine from my EV Mini project. I thought they'd look neat on this and a little bit of play on words. But at the moment, we have a battery that's charging. That's right, ladies and gentlemen after a full week of extremely slow charging, this battery is coming back to life very, very slowly. We may have done something dodgy. I didn't, he did. So as you saw, I pulled one of the batteries out. We needed to have a look, see what was done. But what we did was we manually charged that battery. So that battery's come up to about 3.2, 3.3 volts per cell. Currently the car is only drawing 105 watts from the grid. And this is the other battery I just mentioned before. Now we do have a little, because we're going to be charging this battery and it is overcharged, if we charge it quickly. 
Now these block mons can only do about one and a half amps discharge current, so I don't want to overcharge these batteries. So we've got a little small 24 volt um, electric wheelchair motor there. We're just running that straight from the battery pack just to drain a little bit of energy to keep that one safe. Jump back up here into the bait trim software. We're going to click on menu, menu, and then uh, charge logic. We might have to screen capture this so you can see it. We're going to go to charging. We're going to go edit. And then we've got limited power at the moment. Manual limited power. So we're going to go manual off. Now if we hit uh, save on that. That's going to save there. And if we have a look down here. It'll take a good couple of minutes for it to kick off. So it's actually turned off the charger at the moment. No, it's on manual off. Uh, that'll be why it's not working. Go from manual off to manual on. Save. Right. It's much more fun when you do a video properly. Oh. Yeah. So now we've got a manual on rather than manual off. I'm no expert at this side of the um, the Batrium software. I've never used the charge limiting, but it does work. We have tested it. Uh, there we go, kicking on. What? She's doing 2,800 watts. So that's actually drawing a little bit more than 10 amps. So that is awesome. We jump around to the actual car itself. 138 volts, 138.1 and 17 amps of charging. So we've drawn the battery up from, you know, 0.9 volts per cell, I'm assuming, to something where it's going to actually accept the charge. Now this charge controller turns on at 78 volts. Uh, so to get to that 78 volts, obviously, we that dodgy thing we talked about, yeah. We actually put another 24 volt battery in line with that one. So we just took off one of the terminals here and then connected another 24 volt battery, raised that whole battery voltage just a little bit and charged the entire bank at 0.4 amps using the Batrium to draw it up really, really slowly. So troopers, so the question is now, will this old girl drive? I'm gonna pop that battery back in which I think is going to be a lot harder than it was taking it out. Give it a little bit more charge. I'm going to turn it back to slow again. I don't want it charging at this rate when it's under 140 odd volts. But progress is being made. Having a second look inside the car when I start it, or at least turn the ignition on. Ah, so the battery's got a few bars there now. So we are coming up very, very slowly. Nothing more seems to have changed on the dash. Does the radio work? Oh, excellent. The radio works as well. There's still a parasitic draw on the battery, my brother was saying as well. Um, everything is drawing power all night long. There was, the car was off and there was lights on the dash and stuff. So I'm not sure what was going on there. And I believe that is green at the moment. Uh, so that light there corresponds to the charger underneath the car. Taking a quick look at what I said about these batteries not being restrained in any way, they're just sitting in the box. Uh, we have taken a little bit of foam and just slid it between the two batteries. It's a bit hard to see with all the sunlight. Um, but there's no witness marks on the underside of it actually hitting. Uh, I would still genuinely be concerned about it, but it does have all these standoffs on the batteries. So that will protect it from hitting the top. Uh, and that bus bar across the back just has some, some tape around it. So there is something there, but I would still, I think sliding around backwards and forwards, they could still move substantially under a bit of G-force load. So. I think that's going to have to be addressed in future. Of course, that does mean removing all the batteries. And at that point, we'll probably replace all the, um, the battery management system as well. Put a new Batrium 
system in that's a little bit more modern and less dependent on the Blockmons to discharge the battery, have a more centralized system. And also we won't have the low voltage cutout. So if we had the newer system, we'd actually be able to see every single battery, uh, even if it was dead flat. I believe that's how it works. We are several hours later. Uh, we still don't have enough batteries to turn the watchmon on, but I have to head home. And we thought we'll try the motor. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear anything because it's electric. Now I've got it in neutral. I've got it in forward, because you can see that. Come on, focus you, radio. there we go. So that's forward, up is forward. Uh, if I hit the accelerator, you're gonna be able to see this. Whole car is shuddering. <laughs> Wait a minute, why is the whole car shuddering? That doesn't make any sense. I just put the about a tenth of the throttle down and the whole car shuddered. Yep. imbalanced well that's pretty cool that it actually turns on it'd be nice to drive it uh, but we don't actually know whether this car's got any problems and with that huge shuddering I just felt I bet you one of two things has happened one something's broken underneath the car and we weren't told about it when we bought it or two that flywheel that was put into this car wasn't balanced when it was put together what do you reckon tubers we pulled the electric motor out of this thing take a look at that fly we'll take it into a machine shop and have it properly balanced he's yeah, ugly i'm ugly why do you want me to film literally i don't want to move 10 centimetres. Just just five centimetres. Do you want to you you talk into the camera? I can't possibly finish this video without actually moving this car. Now, I only want to move it by 10 centimetres, five centimetres, just enough to see that it moves. The battery's still sitting out on the floor underneath the truck, trailer, what is it? A van. We're going to give this a crack. Right. I've got my foot on the brake. Are your fingers over the camera? Yeah. Okay, I've got my foot on the brake and I can actually feel the brake working. So, in the first gear. Hand brake off. I'm releasing the clutch. That was the clutch all the way out. Um, might actually need a little bit of accelerator. Hey! <laughs> uh, that's enough. You'll reverse it now. Okay. You'll reverse it now. It's got to be in reverse on the switch. Oh. Don't you put it in reverse? I don't know. Well, I'm not... Could we... Oh, there we go. There you go. It went backwards. And that, tubers, is a wrap. <laughs> it moves.